Now, for the past three nights, a powerful solar storm put on a spectacular celestial light show around much of the world. Social media lit up with people posting pictures of the auroras from northern Europe all the way to Australasia. So to tell us a bit about what that light show actually was is our science editor, Julia Seeger. And Julia, look, um, first of all, um, those images were spectacular, they weren't were they? Uh, but before you explain to us what this actually was. Just tell us, did you manage to see them yourself? I didn't. I actually no. missed all of them. I was so disappointed. Uh, I tried to find, you know, a, a place away from the lights, really mm. with a clear view to, towards the north, but I wasn't able to see uh, any of them. I should have looked longer because so many other people in the northern hemisphere were able to catch that spectacular uh, sight. This, uh, what you're seeing here, is actually the Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy. It's a tidal island, and the pictures were absolutely stunning. But we actually saw also these northern lights uh, at latitude as low as Las Vegas in the United States and there too it was quite spectacular and a, a lot of pictures were uh, were shared on social media with people showing um, uh, these northern lights as you're, you can see here blue violet uh, spectacular indeed uh, pictures and uh, and it happened for three days in a row which is a lot and it also happened even yesterday in China. Okay, spectacular indeed. Let's get into the science then. What actually are we looking at? So the northern lights are due to, as you said, the solar storms. They're also called geomagnetic storms. And the ones that we're experiencing now are quite intense. They're level five, which is the highest level. And the reason why is because the sun has a, an activity cycle and it peaks every 11 years. And 2024 is actually a peak of solar activity. And it's actually going to reach its greatest peak this fall. Um, so what, what actually, ha and the reason and why we can actually see these northern lights at this these low latitudes is because of the intensity of the storms. Now, because usually, of course, those northern lights are usually seen only at the poles, the south and the north pole. So what exactly happens? Um, as you know, there on the surface of the earth, you have these solar storms. So these are huge events, very powerful events that are going to unleash a lot of gas particles, electrons uh, that are then going to, of course, travel with the solar wind and uh, they, it can take days to reach earth. And when it does, it collides with the Earth's ma magnetic field, so here in blue. And what happens then is that you have energy in the form of light that's going to be created, and then kind of like a funnel, it's going to fall back along the magnetic the magnetic lines and fall onto uh, the poles. First on, on the side of the Earth that is uh, with light, so uh, the daytime, and then there's this boomerang effect that you can see here, and it creates other auroras, but this time on the dark side, that's the night side of the Earth, and this is how we can actually see those auroras uh, during the night. So this is an animation that you just saw that was created by the University of Oslo, and it really does help us to grasp exactly how it works, but there's still so much we don't actually understand about the Northern Lights. Do we know how those magnificent colors appear in that way? They're so different, right? Mm. There's a huge palette of colors that are possible, and what scientists believe is that it's actually linked to the type of particles that that collide with each other. So for instance, if you have a lot of nitrogen, the um, nitrogen particles, of course, the uh, northern lights are going to be more red, blue, violet. If there's more oxygen, it's more going to be green and red. And if there's more hydrogen and helium, it's going to be a mix of violet and blue. Now, once again, when I talk about this, you may think that the scientific community knows a lot about mm. the northern lights. But actually, it's only since the development just recently of uh, scientific tools and space exploration that we were able to really measure solar wind particles. And I'm saying this, but at the same time, when you look at what scientists knew in the 17th century, they were already quite close to what we now understand of these northern lights. Well, that's pretty impressive. And just finally, Julia, you're talking, of course, about what we can see from planet Earth. Um, what about extraterrestrial northern lights? Do they of, exist? Of course they do, wow. because the sun, of course, uh, uh, is going to have an impact on all other planets. And so we're going to see those auroras on planets that have a magnetic field and an atmosphere. So for instance, on Jupiter or on Mars. And just recently, we were able to capture an aurora on Mars in 2016 with a spacecraft from NASA called uh, MAVEN, and just recently through the Emirati mission on Mars. And what's really, really cool is that we realized that these um, northern lights actually happen all over the surface of Mars because it doesn't have Earth's magnetic field that works from north to south, but it has a magnetic field that touches the entire surface of Mars. God, what a spectacular thought. Would love to see that one day. Julia Seeger, thanks very much. Thank you.